partnership uh, meant to strengthen cooperation between the public and private uh, actors. Um, we have a lot of exchange between the two countries. Before the pandemics, we had 1.8 million Canadians that visited Mexico uh, and 130,000 uh, Mexicans visiting Canada. Um, we have an increasing number of uh, Mexicans who want to go to Canada as an alternative uh, uh, destination. Most of the Mexicans, of course, go to the US, but uh, in the region, some of the people don't want to go to the US. So Canada is sort of this alternative destination for some of the people. And we have around 50,000 Canadians living permanently in Mexico. Uh, so due to the intensity of this um, migratory flows between the two countries of tourists of working people. Uh, it is relevant to talk about uh, the image of Canada and Mexico and the image of Canadians in, in, in Mexicans in Canada and Canadians in Mexico. Um, why? Because it offers a way uh, to, to analyze um, the background of this film. So um, this is part of an international background, you know, where people, common people are becoming more and more important. There is an increasing interest in networking people in countries and territories. So um, we have a now older concept of country of origin where countries promote their image to the other ones. And on this respect, the media are really important uh, as a, so a tool of soft diplomacy, and they play a vital role in uh, building the image, not only of people, but also of territories and countries. So what is the image that Canadians have about Mexico? And what do Mexicans think about Canada? Uh, in the recent history of Mexico, uh, we, we've been marked by two events. The commercial agreement that I just mentioned that started in 1994 but was renewed under the Trump administration and the war on drugs that started in 2006 in Mexico. This is important because it completely changed the way that the Canadian media was um, writing about Mexico, right? Um, it was started from a country that was perceived as a tourist destination um, to an unsafe place where the rule of law governed no more. And uh, as a matter of fact, important international media appreciated uh, the agreement as a military failure. So um, when analyzing the proportion of good news versus bad news that were published in Canadian Canadian journals about Mexico. Um, we found in a study of 2015-2016 that uh, the media, Canadian media, tends to be quite negative about Mexico. So where do these women that we've just seen arrive in this context where Mexico is seen as a dangerous place, right? Uh, we observe in the Canadian uh, media that most of uh, half of the news, 40%, uh, almost half, refer to violence, crime, insecurity, drug traffic, and murder of journalists in the context of the war on drugs. So um, if we come up to uh, some news that Canadians have also experienced violence in Mexico, the third more common type, we see this direct uh, connection between violence and the overall image. So this uh, leads us to think that this stereotype that was good about uh, Mexico as a sun, place, beach, mariachi, uh, music, which used to characterize the Mexican image has been replaced by the perception of Mexico as a violent place, not appealing to this. Um, and of course, just to compensate this image, uh, the second more, most important topic is, of course, the, the cultural and ecological richness of Mexico, a topic to be explored, of course, by Mexican diplomacy. Um, my question is, um, 
and I think for you as uh, migration scholars is, is important to discuss, do the images determine relations between countries or is it the opposite way? And how do they determine the integration of migrants um, in countries of destination? So it is in this context that I invite you to analyze the program from, for temporary agricultural workers that started in 1974, it has uh, 30 years now. Um, and uh, according to the authorities, it is a program that um, has contributed to in the improvement of international bilateral and international relations. Now, uh, coming to the individual um, part, uh, the individual side of the, the movie, what does it mean? What does migration mean for people who leave their families back in Mexico to go work in Canada? Um, I must say that um, most of the workers are, are men, right? So this is not uh, women. Um, and most of them don't travel with families. Um, and uh, I must also mention that uh, most of the Mexican migration to Canada is highly skilled. Uh, it refers to uh, workers with education. So we have two extremes, either highly skilled that are integrated to this uh, excellent multicultural environment, or they are highly vulnerable, uh, as in the case of uh, agricultural workers who are isolated from the Canadian society and never really get to integrate. It is not really a transnational life that we would like to have um, for these people. So I'm reminding uh, you of this uh, book of uh, Nora Lori that uh, speaks about uh, statelessness in between statuses and precarious citizenship, where she introduces this notion exactly of precarious citizenship that I think is very um, adequate to um, analyze the this, uh, life stories of the woman that we've just seen. Um, so I will take just one minute to, to quote from, uh, from Nora's work, Nora Laurie's work. Ambiguous and temporary legal statuses are spreading because they represent a strategic government response to avoid resolving dilemmas about citizenship. Especially questions about the incorporation of minorities, refugees or labor migrants. By postponing these decisions, perhaps indefinitely, Moreover, the very process of boundary informers, bio biometric IDs and reputations have pulled more people into the docu documentary power of the state without providing them a secure place within it. And she discusses four categories of uh, precarious citizenship, individuals who cannot obtain national identity documents and become stateless, individuals who may have identity documents but lack residency authorization and become illegal, temporary humanitarian protection and temporary labor statuses. The fourth one is what we are dealing with in this documentary. So I would say that the workers that uh, were interviewed in this documentary by Araon, all four under this uh, temporary labor status with no access to citizenship, not even imagining the possibility to stay, bringing their family. These are really vulnerable people with no other option than their constant, constant nomad status, chasing work abroad. And now I will go to the last part of my comment. It is on uh, this um, excellent feature of the documentary that is portraying emotions, right? The author here, Araon, is an anthropologist and an artist also, I may say, in high empathy with his characters, avoiding what has been referred to as a methodological extractivism. He chooses highly vulnerable uh, subjects, not just migrant women, but single migrant women. He endows his women with masks, carnival masks, that hide their immediate emotions. We see their eyes uh, with tears, but we don't really get to see the whole face. Um, 
But at the same time, when we imagine, maybe we imagine worse things than that what really happened. So we uh, we do not get to see um, the tragic theater uh, in which these uh, mothers leave their children behind. We sort of guess it. We reconstruct the history. And uh, uh, in the academic literature, many authors have spoken about these emotions on the move, about double lives and transnationalism. This documentary, I think it allows for a cognitive and emotional empathy with the subjects and takes to a different approach that is emotional rights. Um, this does not refer only to the fact that migrant women should be able to recognize their own feelings, but to a broader call for their practice. Implicitly, this documentary shows that human rights have emotional implications that should be considered in migration diplomacy, mainly centered on economic outcomes, as we have just explained. So this is, uh, these are some idea for, ideas for you to think about the, the film. And I will start now uh, asking some questions to Aaron, my colleague at CISAN. I say this topic of uh, um, temporary workers, agricultural workers to Canada has been little studied in, in uh, literature, uh, but still it's a very important one the isolation of these migrants. So um, how did you get to the idea of making a documentary? We know you are an anthropologist. You have a PhD in anthropology. You are an academic. We almost always work on peer reviewed papers or books. So this is sort of a different way to see things. Yeah, thank you very much, Camelia, for, for your excellent comics comments related with this program migration and the movie. So yeah, well, images for me are very important. I grew up when I was like a teenager watching movies and since then I just love it. I decided to study as a bachelor communication, then social work and then anthropology. And then when I started doing my master uh, program at the Uni Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México, I met a researcher from Canada and I helped them. Uh, she was doing a research related with this program, uh, focused on health issues related with the migrants. So I, I support them, like uh, we, we start to visit different communities in Mexico. And then uh, we arrived to San Matias Cuijingo in the Estado de Mexico, de Mexico. And I realized how a lot of, I discovered, I realized that there are many, many problems related with this ideal program that the governments of Canada and Mexico say. So when I, when she started doing interviews, I was there like, I was there like a, doing translation. And I say, this has to be uh, presented in other way, not just in like a thesis, a PhD thesis that she was writing. And I say, because a lot of people don't, don't know what's going on with this program. They say that only the problem is the problems that we have related with migration is, 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 is USA, but Canada, as you mentioned, Camellia, the images, Bill, like this representation of Canada being a very good country, they respect all human rights, the migration is well, so it's not true talking about this issue. So uh, when we finished that interview, I asked them, the, 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 the family migrants, that if they wish to, to share these comments, the thoughts, these feelings uh, with me, but in front of, of a camera and um, I was surprised because they say yes, yes, they say yes, we want to share this because we don't want that other migrants uh, uh, live this kind of experience that my, my, that we have been living like in the last years. So since then I discovered that the documentary will be a, like a bonus will be very important in the academia discussion, but also it's a tool for, for like uh, 
spread the word in the community. So I decided to make documentaries and bring this movie, the, the last one uh, that I did, it, the perspectives. I bring this movie to the community and I, sh I present in the middle of the, the, these small towns without, I bring my screen, I get a projector from the UNAM, and then I present the movie there. So for me, it was very important because then we can discuss the topic about this. So it's not easy to bring a paper, you know, that you publish and show them and share. That's not the way. So I discovered that this is very important for many ways. So they construct the stereotypes of, of Mexicans. They, con they construct the, the idea of this program is ideal and all the world have to follow this example of program. Uh, it works for the, for the communities as, a di as open a dialogue and reflection. Also, when I bring this, the last movie um, to Canada, I use as a tool and then I start to present in different universities all over Ontario and also in Quebec, in Quebec. and I, I bring in the in the classroom and then I discuss with the with the with the students and professors. So it's an an amazing tool to 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 think about this kind of migration. So yeah, I have been uh, using the this tool also. You know, uh, it's a uh, very important like. Uh, for when the people talk and about their their issues, they they maybe uh, have other kind of reflections. Like these three women, uh, Vicky, Letty, and Betty, they 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 were very grateful and um, very pleased to share because they learn, you know, through words, through speech, through discourse. So it's kind of you know, like a relief, you know, and then you listen these stories and then you say, oh, I'm not the guilty one, you know, I'm not, it's not only my problem, it's, this problem is all over the world, you know, so it has many, many uh, good impacts, you know, uh, doing this kind of documentaries. Um, so your intention was to really get closer to the subject that is something that the academic writing doesn't allow us to because we have to be objective always right so we have to interview more people more perspectives but really we don't get to to approach the subjects in the same way um i would like to ask you what was the most difficult moment with the subjects did they start to cry what was there a moment when you couldn't handle it anymore. And um, was this idea, the masks, a way to put a distance between you and them? Yeah. Well, was the, the topic itself? Well, at the beginning, I was thinking make a movie related with, with like a sexual and emotional changes and practices in Canada. So my topic was other at the beginning, you know? And then thinking, and they were talking, and then I, I share this idea, and I say, if I talk about this intimacy, these sexual practices, you know, emotions, in that way, maybe it will be a problem, it will be not like a good tool to, for them, because it is it, still to be a taboo. So talking with them, and then also when I start doing the interviews, that's why the mask, because I want to not create a problem, you know. And when I watch the, the, the first uh, shots, I say, well, you know, they are talking about more about maternity, and this is more important than other things. So I, I decide to, you know, to change a little, change the, the issue. They talk about intimacy, but they talk about motherhood and what the meaning of motherhood at a distance, you know? So I change a little bit and then I say, well, but I already start these uh, shots with mask. And I say, well, I keep the mask and then we will decide. And because this work was not just by my, my ideas, it's like a, 
like uh, as you mentioned is not this kind of uh, extractive anthropology is like a uh, sharing all the time I, sh I, I shared this uh, like uh, maybe 10 minutes and then 15 minutes and then 45 minutes to them and then we decide what 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 to be like in the final cut so it's a collaborative project so uh, yeah the, it was like a, and then the more difficult probably was not like the relation with them because I them I know them they are my friends I mean I have a relation with them maybe in the last with Vicky in the last probably like uh, 13 years because even I met them before she was in the program you know I met them the family I met them the the, the town so we, we build a very good relations and also with with Leti and Betty so that was not the problem we have a lot of they know my life, they know my partner, they know what I'm doing. So it's we have really connection. That's why I decide also to to do this film because it's not I didn't want to be like a, a, a anthropology like an extractivist. So but maybe the, the most difficult was when I finished the movie, like a, almost 50 minutes, and I talk with the editor and he say you, you, we, we did some changes, we suggest this, and I saw the movie 25 minutes and say, no, there's a lot, there's a lot to say. There are many stories that are, you know, we, we not, don't talk about that. It was very, a little bit sad and painful, you know, and they say, oh, but yeah, talking about that, the, the most difficult was that really. The other emotion and the relation with them not because we we our relation is very close and and I understand and we we cry during the, the some shots but we would smile in others we share food we share many things so yeah cooking and living in twenty five minutes because no please <laughs> yeah thank you thank you so much uh, Dr Mendy Guru for this uh, first of all for uh, agreeing to show us your film. And I'm really sorry, Dr. Tigal, and you that we have to now stop this really illuminating discussion, although I don't want to, I really do not want to, but we have to. Um, I'll just uh, give my two, three, uh, you know, points that I felt and I really felt that how the audiovisual medium is so powerful in uh, you know, expressing, uh, I experienced for the first time how powerful it can be to, you know, um, give the message of really the lived realities of immigrants. And so much can be uh, actually, you know, learned from the audiovisual material rather than just the text. You also ex explained it very well. Um, the other thing is that, uh, you know, how slavery and colonialism never really ended, you know, it just changed forms. And uh, that's what we see in this film also. And we see it throughout the world. Like from South Asia, for example, we have uh, people going to work in the Middle East and they work in similar conditions, extremely exploitative, without any rights. So, you know, world over, there are so, so many similar, uh, the, the, the human condition, the similarities are so profound that you know if uh, students of migration sit down at platforms like this and discuss about them then we will understand uh, so many common threads that join uh, the human experience around the world and finally i want to talk about the gender dimension of uh, immigration you know ever since we were kids i have i have so many friends whose fathers have been working abroad but that does not affect the family so much so much as you know, when the mother leaves the family and goes to work, leaving the children behind. Because the father notion of the father figure has always been that of a provider. For that, he can do anything. He can leave the country. He can not see his family for years on end. He can go and fight in the border in precarious conditions. He can die also. But when the mother goes, then a lot of dynamics change. So that is also something that this movie highlighted, in my opinion. Uh, really, once again, thanking both of you, uh, especially to Dr. Aran for really, you know, 
volunteering to show us your film which is still running in film festivals and you know for free we got to watch this amazing movie and stirring our emotions and our uh, you know mind thank you thank you once again for this very much and dr tigao for really illuminating uh, comments and discussion now uh, friends we have uh, come to the end of our uh, one day long international um, international conference on understanding international migration and uh, i'll just give a small vote of thanks to everyone who participated this in this event to make it a success now it was a long cherished dream of mine to have a discussion of this kind in south asia as uh, i believe that you know we lack a platform uh, to discuss uh, international migration issues here today we had speakers addressing more than a dozen broad issues pertaining to international migration it was uh, really like a dream come true for me our engagement uh, does not end here it's in fact you know just the beginning uh, we will be very soon sharing a call for full papers to all of you as we are determined to bring out at least one edited uh, volume comprising some of the fascinating papers that were presented today and if we see more interest uh, from the uh, participants we will facilitate more publication as well we will also be inviting speakers of international repute uh, to address migration related issues in the coming days from the platform of nice and please stay tuned stay with us we will have a robust uh, international migration discussion platform we will build together a robust platform in the coming days um as we come to the end of this conference i have a long list of people to thank uh, to make this global event a grand success i will begin by thanking all the participants who sat through uh, these interesting sessions today and engaged with the papers presented next my sincere gratitude to over 60 speakers from across the world for bringing such a kaleidoscopic view on international migration to the table without your enthusiasm this could not have been i will now uh, uh thank all our chairs professor elena nesbe pedro lara de aruda sasiwan chinchit dr pinchamon geopatong dr akansha natani dr jeevan banya neeti biani and dr peter chang uh, we are very thankful to you for your for such smooth conduct of the sessions and keeping to time special thanks to those of you who were awake in the middle of the night uh, to to be able to chair sessions you all are really fantastic and we hope to collaborate with you in the future again thanks to dr aram nelliburo for sharing his film and dr kamelia tigao for uh, commentating on it finally i express my gratitude to the nice team who has worked relentlessly for coordinating this event our session coordinators pakhi shreya akriti navya and mushtaba thanks for your precious contributions and finally the backbone of the entire event dr pramod jaiswal for taking up the proposal so swiftly and bringing my idea to life muchas gracias pramod thank you so much bye bye good night good thank night you. everyone bye bye gracias